come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voice is raised. Your voice is raised. Give glory. gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we gather, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. turned to total darkness, or a storm, or trumpeting thunder, or the great voice speaking, which made everyone that heard it beg that no more should be said to them. The whole scene was so terrible that Moses said, I am afraid, and was trembling with fright. But what you have come to is Mount Zion, and the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, where the millions of angels have gathered for the festival, with the whole church in which everyone is a firstborn son and a citizen of heaven. You have come to God himself, the supreme judge, and have been placed with spirits of the saints who have been made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator, who brings a new covenant and blood for purification, which pleads more intimately than Abel's. The word of the Lord. O oh God, we ponder your love within your temple. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion, true pole of the earth, the great king's city, God in the midst of its citadels has shown himself its stronghold. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of God, in the city of the Lord of hosts, which God upholds forever. O oh God, we ponder your love within your temple, your praise, O oh God, like the name, like your name, reaches to the ends of the earth. With justice, your right hand is filled. I 
call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to his name. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus made a tour round the villages teaching. Then he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no haversack, no coppers for their purses. But they, they were to wear sandals. But he added, do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, if you enter a house anywhere, stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you, and people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake off the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. So they set off to preach repentance, and they cast out many devils and anointed many sick people with oil and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. We continue our continuous reading, it's called, from the book of Hebrews. In the weekdays of ordinary time, we have continuous readings of different books of the Bible. And so we are situated where the Hebrews, so to the Jewish community, is wondering what, what is there in this which is being offered in Christianity, in the way, in the following of Jesus, that is different to what we had in the Mosaic law. So in the prescriptions of Moses and the law, the Torah, and, and how they are to worship there, what is different? And, and some are wondering, should we go back? So continuously in the book of Hebrews, you see this kind of comparison, and as it were, an, an, an apology, which is in, in a Christian sense, a defense for why we do what we do, and an invitation for them to come to terms with what Christ offers. So what we have before us in our reading is this kind of dynamic happening, and especially around worship. And what is being contrasted is the worship where at Mount Sinai, as Moses and the people of God were encamped there, and they received the law, they, they're looking at what did that worship offer you, and what the worship with Christ offers. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the Old Covenant that was struck there with God and his people, and what Christ offers in a new covenant. And it being invited to realize this is a fulfillment of everything that was hoped for in the first covenant. And so it begins by telling us, what you have come to is nothing known to the senses. And then it remembers what, what, was, what was the experience on Mount Sinai in the old covenant and, and in that kind of worship. Well, it was a lot of sensory experiences, a blazing fire, a, a gloom turning to total darkness, a storm, trumpet, and thunder. If we remember the images in the, books of, in the book of Exodus around Sinai as they were camped there. A great voice speaking which made everyone that heard it beg that no more should be said to them. The whole scene was so terrible that Moses says, I am afraid. And he was trembling with fright. And he says, that's not what you've come to. What you've come to is Mount Zion. Mount Zion and the city of the living God. In other words, no longer, if we were to use that, that image, no longer does Moses go up to meet God in the burning bush. Now in the incarnation, in Jesus becoming one of us, God comes down, as Philippians 2 would say, he comes down from heaven, empties himself, becomes poor so that we may become rich, becomes one of us to welcome us into his, into his divinity. And so God comes down to us and dwells in our midst. So what you have come to in this, in this worship in Christ is Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem where millions of angels have gathered for the festival with a whole church in which everyone is a firstborn son and a citizen of heaven. We are firstborn in Christ, as Paul would write in, in the adoption that we have been given. You have come to God himself, the supreme judge, and have been, and been placed with the spirits of the saints who have been made perfect. Now, where, where do we come to this? Because we have to also reflect on that. 
Well, here we are gathered at Holy Mass. You know, Scott Hahn wrote this wonderful book called The Lamb's Supper some years ago. And, and in it, he, he invited us to reflect on the scriptures and especially the New Testament and the way in which the sacrifice of the Mass is the Lamb's Supper. It's the Lamb's Supper. And there, heaven and earth are joining. It's heaven on earth. And what we read about, especially in Revelations 4 and 5, where we hear about the heavenly liturgy, the heavenly worship, the kind of worship that happens in heaven, it's here. We, have, we, we enter into it. The fullness of it we will experience in heaven. But at the sacrifice of the Holy Mass, we enter into the sacrifice once for all that Christ effected, that Hebrews itself would have spoken about three chapters ago in chapter 9. And so it's an invitation. Are you aware what you have come to? Do you know in whose presence you are? Are you aware of if, if we had the, the, the eyes of faith and the eyes to see what God sees and what God offers us in this space, would we really understand where we are at? What is happening? You know, in that, some of the things that they speak of in the heavenly liturgy in Revelation, well, you have, a, you have the throne and you have the angels and, and you have garments of white and you have the lamb on the throne. And, and what is the song of the angels? Just to pick one thing out of that, you know, the song of the angels, we are told, the song of the seraphim, and, and they describe the seraphim, those four creatures that are there with, with, um, with their wings and their eyes, etc. It's holy, holy, holy. Sanctus, sanctus, sanctus. You know, uh, it's, it's thrice holy, which means beyond all comparing holy. That, that the song of the angels is this, this exclamation that is continuous before the throne of God. Holy, holy, holy. And, and, and what, what, where else do we see this? Well, about 800 years before John wrote this in Revelation, somebody else wrote that. Isaiah. Isaiah has this vision of the heavenly Jerusalem. And in that vision, what does he see? Well, he sees seraphim again. The same thing that John writes in Revelation, Isaiah writes about. He sees seraphim. And the same thing that the book of the Hebrews speaks about, millions of angels gathered for this festival, this banquet, the banquet of the Lamb. And what does Isaiah write there that the angels are singing? The same thing. Hagios, 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 which is the Hebrew for holy, holy, holy. Well, it's a Greek, sorry, for holy. Hebrew is kadosh. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. You know? And, and, and there, there you have it. This is exclamation that God is beyond our compare. And before the presence of God, before, we cannot even imagine what that would be like. And so at Holy Mass, we enter into that heavenly worship, and we are privileged to be there. And we invite it. Recognize what has been offered to you. Recognize what's been offered to me. And as we enter into that, join with the choirs of angels. Shortly we will sing, you know, we will sing, well, we will say it, um, but we will sing. That's why the liturgy has things that are sung at various parts. And we can't go, every part has a, such a beautiful significance. But we will repeat those words, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Because it's the song of the angels before the throne. It's a song that is sung at a heavenly banquet. So we sing it as we enter into the heavenly banquet at the beginning of the liturgy of the word, of, of the Eucharist. And so we begin to realize what we have come to, what has been offered to us in Christ Jesus, what he has opened for us in his own flesh. In the gospel, we see Jesus going around and, and, and doing his ministry, doing his ministry. And one of the things that that we may be struck at in, the, in his invitation as he sends his disciples out and, and missions them to, to go and to do things in his name. Well, he invites them to don't take much. You know, when we think about our lives quite often, we think that we are so cluttered. And quite often that is true. There's always more we can do without. You just have to, well, in times of COVID, so people are not flying much. But if you were to pack and go a weekend somewhere, you realize, oh gosh, I have all those things I really didn't need, you know? And so we, we overpack. And Jesus is saying, for this journey, you don't need much. For this journey, you don't need much. And there's, there's an invitation to trust in him. So too, in this is an invitation to realize, ultimately, at the heart of that is that God is enough, that God is sufficient. 
in that, in that wonderful poem of St. Teresa of Avila, um, Nada te turbe, she wrote it in Spanish. Uh, uh, let nothing disturb you, nothing distress you. While all things pass away, God alone is unchanging. God alone is unchanging. He's enough. He's sufficient. So let nothing disturb you. And as we come to realize what we have been offered in Christ and what we gather here for, we have to also remember that. Because sometimes we try to hold on to all sorts of things and we don't live as simply as we can. And our, our lives become cluttered with things because we think we need this for our comfort and that for our comfort and reassurance. And we fail to see what we have been offered in Christ as he is the one who should be comforting us, giving us strength, offering us all that we need for the journey. Because that's what we have come to. That's, that's what we have been baptized into. That's the experience of a firstborn that the book of the Hebrews and St. Paul in especially would invite us, open your eyes and see. See whose you are. See to whom you belong. As a daughter or a son of, of the king. A sister or brother of Christ. And therefore, what do we need to let go of to be able to really appreciate what God offers us? what we have come to, what our faith invites us to, the journey that we are called to make. And the ways in which that, that's why Jesus in, in the gospel can cry out, come to me. Don't go elsewhere. Don't look for your happiness and your comfort elsewhere. Come to me, all you who find life heavy and burdensome, and I will give you rest. See who is before you. The first thing the apostles are, are told as they set off is they are to preach repentance. They are pre to preach repentance. And in Mark's gospel, that is very important because the first words of Jesus in Mark's gospel are repent and believe. So he says, the time has come. The kingdom is at hand. Repent and believe. Because when we begin to realize our own inadequacy, our own need for God, and, and the ways in which we don't trust God enough, we call to repent. When we begin to, begin to realize how cluttered our lives are and all the ways in which we, we seek props and people and things and, and our own agendas and all sorts of things, we have to repent. When we begin to realize we don't even appreciate our gratitude for what God has given to us in Christ Jesus and what we celebrate in the sacraments, we are called to repent. Repent and believe. Repent and believe. And we call to bring others to share in that faith that we, that we profess and the heavenly banquet where we receive from God. And in our own hearts, to, to truly then allow a song to emerge that is holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Beyond any imagining. Not because it's there written, not because this is what the angels sing, but because in our own experience, we come to experience the goodness, the love, and the holiness of God that is beyond our imagining. What we have come to is nothing known to the senses. It is Mount Zion and the city of the living God. And as the psalmist says, indeed, O God, we ponder your love right here. Amen. Let us stand as we pray. Lord, in your goodness, in your love, you come to us. Your love is hospitable. You make space for us. You bring us into you. You invite us. We pray, Lord, that we may recognize what we have come to and the tremendous gift that you offer us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, indeed, we, may we never take for granted this gift. We pray for a deepening of faith, a deepening of our own awareness and understanding of what we have come to, the great mystery we celebrate. We pray for hearts that are open to drink deeply from the source of life that you offer us in your word and in your body and blood. Lord, hear us. There are many ways in which we do not always turn to God when we should. In the midst of the challenges of life, 
the vicissitudes, the, the uncertainty we live with, the stresses. Lord, we are sorry. And we pray that we may deepen our knowledge and our, our conviction by faith that God is enough. He is sufficient for every single need that we have. Lord, hear us. We pray for missionaries throughout the world. And the call that we have to live mission in our own families, among our own friends and relationships and in our workplaces and schools, that we may never tire of hearing that call to go out and take the good news to others. Lord, hear us. We pray for our church, for our Holy Father, for all those who lead and govern in our church, that they may indeed experience continuously a fresh outpouring of your spirit, guiding them. Lord, hear us. We pray for our nation. In the midst of all that we experience and the many different decisions, the tensions that exist, we pray that we may be a people who seek to build the human family, the common good. That, O oh Lord, you may pour out your spirit to open our hearts, to expand our hearts, to welcome each other, to care for each other, especially those most poor and marginalized, to care for your creation that you have entrusted to us as well. And so that we may grow up beyond our greed, our corruption, our lack of integrity. Lord, hear us. In this moment, let us bring forth the Lord our own petitions in the silence of our hearts. We remember those we promised to pray for. Lord, hear us. Pray for those who are not well, the names recommended for our prayer, as well as not just physically, but mentally. We ask your healing touch. Lord, hear us. For all the intercessions being offered in this Mass, Lord, you know each person's need. We ask your blessings, your graces. We pray too for the repose of the souls of all who have died. We remember those who have died because of crime or violence or disasters. Those who have died because of COVID-19 and other terminal, other illnesses. Those who have taken their own lives. Upon them all, we ask your mercy. Eternal rest grant unto them all, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. Love and Father, we thank you that you hear our prayer, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced into eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, and you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, O Divine Saviour, O Jesus, O Blessed Sacrament.
Indeed, sisters and brothers, what we have come to is a banquet that he himself has laid for us, for he is both priest and victim. What we have come to is a banquet where God says we are his friends. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. What we have come to is a God of love, who wants relationship with us, who feeds us with his word and his body and blood, who strengthens us and shows us a way home. Let us yield and surrender to that awesome, tremendous love of God that continuously pursues us and invites us to come. Let us not procrastinate our yes, our yielding to him. And let us ask him for the grace as well to recognize that he is enough in the midst of the ways in which we clutter our lives with so many things for our poverty of spirit. God is enough. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.